Hey everybody! It's been a while since I've done a video here. We've been pretty busy this year. We moved from our location in Ohio back into Pennsylvania into a larger facility, a bigger office, and we actually have space if we want to do any retail sales. We don't have space for that. So we've been busy on the physical front and then on the game side. We've also been busy. Virix was finished. Virix was a massive game to create and a video on that's coming soon. Um, Klaus finished Mancala. Um, Klaus finished uh, Mancala. He wrote himself. It's a great game. I'm going to be doing a video on that later. He finished the Port of Guzzler, which has been selling very well. That's a great little game to play. Um, Chris finished Dragon uh, Dungeon Plunder for the Aquarius and also a version for the ColecoVision. And I finished Kickstar just recently, and that's this game right here. Kickstar is a space shoot 'em up game that is very similar to how our old, our, how old arcade games played. So I want to give you a quick playthrough here, just to show you. I'll stop the game as I'm going, just to point things out. I just want to give you a quick playthrough on how things work. So in the game, you can see right now, this is the title screen. It has high scores, and all high scores are kept as long as you keep the game on. So when you turn it off, they're lost, unfortunately. We have a nice little musical loop going in the background by Amy Purple. It's a nice little ditty. It plays at the title screen. It also plays when you pause the game. So to start the game here, you would press the arm button to start. But let me let me just, before I start that, let me just tell you, it, it says it in the manual, there are two special number keys that you can hold down when you start the game. If you hold down uh, the zero key, I could be getting my numbers mixed up because I don't have the manual in front of me, but if you hold down a zero key and reset the ColecoVision, you have unlimited lives, unless you play the game whatever, without ever dying. And if you hold down, I believe it's the nine key, it could be the, could be the pound sign, but I believe it's the nine key. And when you restart it, you get unlimited lives, plus it's in demo mode, which basically lets the game just play. You can't control it. It just plays, it never dies. It lets, it, it lets you, if you want to have it on as a background thing, it was a feature that we put into it when we were doing our testing. We did our 24-hour burn-in to make sure there was no bugs that caused the game to crash. And then we decided afterwards, why not just leave it there? It's a nice little background thing. It ain't going to hurt. I mean, it's, it's just a thing. So, let me show you how the game works here. First up, this, again, this is the title screen. You have the name up in the top left-hand corner is the score of the last game played. Up in the top right-hand corner is the high score of all the games that have been played since the system's been on. Then down below you have the top 10 high scores in there. And then to start the game, you press arm to start, which it says up on top. Now you get to select the skill level, easy, normal, and hard. I would suggest playing easy until you get used to it, because normal and hard really do get harder. So press easy. Once you press easy, the game starts. The music goes away when you're playing the game, so you don't have to continuously hear it. It doesn't become an earworm and gets stuck in your head. Once the game starts, you have the first wave coming through. I'm going to pause this. You pause it by pressing the arm key. When paused, your ship goes away and the enemies are just sitting there moving around and waiting. So let's just show you what's going on on the screen here. Again, on the top left-hand corner is your score. Right after it, you'll have either Roman numeral 1, 2, or 3. That's your skill level that you started with, so you know what it is. Then inside there, you have your, in the middle, you have your ships that you have, how many lives you have. You start out with 5. The maximum you can get is 6. You get a new life every, I want to say every 900 points, but it may be every 700 points. Then in the top right-hand corner is your high score. Down on the bottom corner, bottom left hand, is your damage percentage. You can take three hits before you die. So technically, if you multiply it out, as of right now, I have 15 lives. And then the bottom right hand corner is the wave you're on. And then it blinks pause there, wait for me to start it. Just start it back up, I would hit the fire button. And I'm back. Now you can see that they're shooting at me, they're bombing me, and I am shooting at them. I shoot one shot at a time. You see that little glowing box that came down? It'll come down again. If I get that, now I have machine gun shots to fire. That only lasts a little while, then it goes away. You can see each subwave or each, yeah, I'd say subwave, is a different type of Kixar creature, which are insecto, insectoids, mechanical insectoids living in space. 
the whole backstory in, in the manual, there's an actually a, the first chapter of a book that I wrote about Kickstarter, where they meet these aliens. And the Kickstarter live in between stars, and we didn't know they existed until we left the solar system. And then when we left the solar system, we found them. So as you can see, I get different waves. They come in different, or subwaves. They come in different patterns containing different things. They easy, but they progressively get harder. I should have caught that. I want to get. I want to get one of those. I want the multiple firebox. Where's the fire? There it is. There. Did I get it in time? Yeah, these are the hard ones. These are called weevils. They come in groups of four. When you shoot them, you just only remove one. So. Each group of four has to be hit four times to get rid of them. Every time you finish a subway, you hear that sound. Do, 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 telling you another subway is coming. You can go up, down, left, and right. And the up, down is basically really used for right here when you're in the minefield. Ah, got me. The minefield is basically a chance for you to take a little break because right after the minefield comes mother. This is mother. Mother shoots her babies out at you. You have to destroy the arms here. Each arm has to be hit a certain number of times. If you destroy the arm, then you can get to her eye. I'm trying to do it without dying, but I'm going to die anyways. The eye's open over there. Get the eye. Got one eye. Got to get the other eye here. Give me, give me, give me a multiple shot. Yay. Oh, I'm down to my last one. I'm down to my last one. Am I gonna get? Am I gonna beat? Oh, I beat Mother. Yay! Mother disappears. I'm on wave two, and they come back. Each wave gets progressively harder. Things change as you're playing them. I'm gonna pause it here. Things change as you play them. The kicks are move faster. Their bombing gets more accurate. Eventually, their bombs aim for you. They become smart bombs. Right now, when you're first playing the game, they're not smart bombs until they get close to you. Then they can home in on you. So they'll drop down, then they home in afterwards. Later on, once you get deeper into the game, they become smart bombs and they home on you instantly. The Kickstarter's bombing speeds up. Their range speeds up. When you first start the game, they're limited to... you got to be pretty much underneath them before they bomb you. When you get deeper into the game, they bomb from everywhere. So you're really under attack bad. And then also, the other things that change too is that... Once you get to a certain point, you can actually start shooting the bombs too. Once you shoot the bombs... Excuse me. <coughs> when you shoot the bombs, you get more scores. So the game progressively gets harder and harder as you go. So I'm going to play this off here. I'm going to die anyways in this moment. But I want to show you the rest of this. So I'm back in here. I didn't plan on dying, but I'm probably going to. Maybe I can get an extra life out of this one. Come on, I'm down to like one, one, two more hits and I'm dead. Oh, one more hit. What are you doing? Why did I aim? For, oh, I got me. So when you die, see it says game over on the top. It takes you back here. Now you can set your high score. You can use your arrow keys up and down. Or not arrows, your joystick up and down. So... I like doing buy. And the high score is in there. Now I'm gonna do this again, but I'm gonna do it at the hardest level. And I'll show you what I mean by how they progressively get harder. So here we go. Wish me luck. See how the bombs are coming at me now? They don't just go straight down. They're coming at me and they're dropping from anywhere. And also the wave patterns change as you go along too. So this is gonna, this becomes a progressively harder and harder game. But the nice thing is, once you get to a certain point, it doesn't get any harder. It stays there. Well, actually, I take that back. It it does loop back. So once you get to, I believe it's internal like i'm on wave one of the hardest level if you notice up in the top left hand corner i paused it but the top left hand corner you see the, the roman number three showing that i'm on level i'm doing skill level three and even though it says wave one down at the bottom i'm theoretically i'm on wave 30 so that's why it's harder once it goes thir wave 31 at wave 32 it recycles back so if you try the hardest level first like you play hard, you only got to go through two ways before you get back to the beginning and you get the easy time again. So, let's see what else I can do here. Oh, the name of the ship down there is the USS Vanguard. 
like I said, there's a, in the manual, there's a little storyline going on here. There's two people in there, Jack, and I think Thea is the girl's name. I could be wrong. I'm going to end up dying here. Well, I always end up dying. I'm not good at playing games. I'm, I love writing them, but I'm not that good at playing them. So if you notice, there's different types of bugs. You got the weevils. These are the spiders. Then you got the buzz flies, which are the chrome-colored blinking ones. Right there, uh, right there, the buzz flies. And then you have the da, 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 the bees, which should come up eventually. Oh, did you see that one was hiding in here? Now, oh, if you also notice, when your power up comes down, power up always starts pretty much above you. So if you're in a safe area where they can't get you, wait for the power up to show up. So let's see what I'm doing. Notice I'm dying off here and I'm done. Game over. So there we go. This is Kixar. It's a nice game. It's fun to play. I explored a lot of different things when I'm really pushing the limits of the uh, sprites for the ColecoVision with it. As you notice, there's a lot going on on the screen. It's very smooth. It's very seamless, I would say. So that's Kixar. It's available in the store in console Moo. Oh, and just so in case anybody was kind of curious, because I really haven't explained on 8 million yet, but console Moo is the store we sell out of now. That is our internal store. 8 Bit Millie Games is still who we are when we write the software, the games. But we, what we wanted to do is we wanted to separate the store from the game so that we can sell other people's games too. If you notice, if you go on to console Moo, you see that we're selling in television games written by, uh, from Electro Knight. We're selling games, Atari games that have been written by other people that we publish. And we didn't want to say that everything was from 8-Bit Millie because it wasn't. We're not writing these games. Other people write these games, so we're, we're selling them for them. So console Moo is the store. 8-Bit Millie Games is the software. Have a great day.